often uh, here in, in, in Kenya, we, we are still in the morning. It's around uh, five o'clock in the morning. So thank oh. you so much. My name is John Chebor, and I'm a lecturer at the Department of Com Computer Science and Information Technology of Kaparak University in Akuru, Kenya. So I'm going to present a serial number based authentication model uh, for a computer in a wireless local area network. Actually, this is focused on prototyping, prototyping a serial number uh, uh, authentication model for a computer in a wireless network. So uh, apart from myself, I have also some colleagues from uh, our university, and I would like to acknowledge them. That is Simon Karume, Andrew Kipkebut, and Nelson Masese. They contributed to this area and their names are listed in the paper that we submitted in the International Journal of Wireless and Mobile Networks. So in this presentation, uh, I would like to start by saying that a wireless local area network is a network that allows access to network services using radio waves over some frequency ranges. And because of that, then such networks allow mobility, rapid deployment, reduction in infrastructure and operational costs, flexibility, and scalability. Those are the, 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 the goodness of having such kind of networks. However, the, 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 the wireless networks are generally prone to spoofing, denial of service, eaves dropping, man in the middle, masquerading, message modification, message replay, and traffic analysis, among other threats. And so because of these threats, then identification, authentication, and authorization in that order are the essential functions in providing the required security services in such kind of a wireless area network. Now, because our focus is on prototyping a serial number based uh, uh, authentication, then th th these other authentication methods like password, token, biometric, certificate, MAC address, IP address, are the methods that are used as part of the network security controls. And specifically, uh, uh, I'm interested, or we are interested in the MAC address, IP address, and a time certificate, because this concerns authentication of a machine. The other authentication methods are actually user-based, or the users of such kind of network. Then, if you look at the MAC address, then in comparison, when we compare it with the serial number, which is the area of our focus, the serial, the, the, the MAC address is spanned in the NIC hardware, the network interface hardware. And at the same time, another copy is placed in the system software, of course, for, for the purpose of configurations and also for the, for the purpose of transmission of information. And as a, as a result, if you look at the MAC address, then it can be spoofed. And because it can be spoofed, and then it can be altered. And therefore, they are not secure, they are not unique, and they are unreliable as required for a, a network or, or for, for, for authentication identifiers. And so if you look at the other way around, that is as far as a computer serial number is concerned, the serial number is only hard coded on the hardware without a copy in the system software. So because of this, then it is very hard to spoof because it's only coded, but we don't have a copy in the system software. So it is hard to, to, to spoof at the same time, it cannot be altered. And as such, we can say that the serial number is unique, secure, reliable, and therefore suitable for, for authentication, authenticating computers in a network. And it's because of this reason that the study was aimed at designing a model 
or, or what you call a serial number based authentication prototype that demonstrates how a computer serial number can be used in authenticating a computer in a wireless network. And so uh, 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 to achieve that main aim, and then we had to develop an algorithm that obtains and uses a remote computer serial number in a wireless LAN, and also design the model and also demonstrate how the model can use the computer serial number to authenticate the computer in a wireless LAN. And finally, evaluate the model that was uh, uh, developed uh, and it uses a serial number for authentication, authenticating the, the computer in a wireless LAN. And if you look at all these areas, that is developing, designing, demonstrating, and also evaluating, then all of them are based on design science research approach. And this was carried out as, as follows. The first one is to design and develop the model. How did we do this one? On the design part, for, for, for us to use that serial number for authentication purposes, then first of all, it's just like a preliminary we had to register computers first and then number two start uh, uh, and connect a database which, con uh, which will contain the details the, 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 the authentication details and then delete existing details so that when you log on to the network and the new details are collected and captured so number four is to get and collect the, the authentication details. Number five, allow dis or disallow a computer to the network. So can, 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 can the model allow a computer based on, on the registration, on the registered computers, or it cannot? If it can allow, then the details are posted on, on, on the authentication database. Then after that, they are retrieved and then displayed so that they can be controlled. You, we, we can manage, we can manage a computer that has been allowed into the network. So if you can look at all these steps, then they, 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 they are designed in, in a way that they can be executed recursively in that order from number one up to number eight. And so a dynamic programming algorithm was employed because it optimizes solutions on the step-by-step -step basis recursively to the all as shown in, in the figure, in this figure here. So if you look at that figure, then the algorithm requires that, first of all, we register computers, and then we delete connected uh, uh, device records, get connected computers, authentication details, that is the name. Actually, these details are the name, the IP address, and of course, the, the, the serial number, that is our focus. Then they are collected, and then now, how uh, uh, the basis of either allowing a computer to the network or not is based on the registration. So the question is, is a computer registered? If yes, then it will be allowed to the network access. The details are posted. And then they are also retrieved and displayed for, for, for now the usage, the, 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 the control, and also either allowing or disallowing a computer to the network. And then on the other hand, if the computer is not registered, then it is denied access to the network. And that is the, the, the flow chart for that algorithm. And the second part of our design science research is on the, the, the issue of developing the, the, the model. Now, how, how can it be de developed? So here we are saying that in, in order to make sure that all the, the parts of this system or the model is put into consideration in order to make sure that we have everything in place then we had to put them into pre preparation did the details collection processing display and storage uh, uh, subsystems and the flow of these events from registration of computers all the way to, to display the authentication details was illustrated using a state chart diagram as shown in this uh, uh, background here, where 
uh, of course, we, we, we had to put them into preparation side and in that preparation section, we, we, we have the, the computers registered, starting and, and, and connecting to the database, deleting records. And then from the database, the, the, the IP address is collected, the, the computer name and also the serial number. And this is what we call the data collection uh, system, subsystem or module. Then after collecting all these details, then they are collected so that now we can use them to validate the computers, whether they should be allowed into the system or not. And that is what we call the data processing section. Then after that, the, 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 the details are posted to the database, and then they can also be retrieved into an interface, which is part of the data display for for now controlling on decision of whether a computer can be allowed or not and so for us to do this then we had to implement it or or demonstrate and that is part of also the design science research where we demonstrated using a prototype and why a prototype because it will simplify and prove those uh, uh, parts that we wanted to use to prove that we can use a serial number to authenticate a computer in a network. So the prototype was implemented using uh, MySQL and also Java, uh, the NetBeans ID tools. And the prototype first uh, asked to go through all those steps from registration all the way up to controlling the computers that are out in the network. And of course, valid computers are controlled and the ones that are not valid are also disallowed or they are disabled uh, from accessing the network. And so the prototype setup constituted the following, the authentication server, which contained our application, and then the authentication details, the database, where all the credentials, the authentication credentials, are managed, stored, and then managed or re re retrieved from. Then we also add an access point and also two clients. Why two clients? One, for, for, for valid uh, processing. For one, we can allow. The other one, uh, it uh, can be disallowed. And then we see the results. And then the other component is the, the, the application the SNAP application, and finally the connections are shown in this diagram, in diagram three. So that is the setup for the two clients, the access point, the SNAP application, the authentication server, as well as the authentication details. And still on the prototype, through proof of concept approach, then we were able to prove the, the, the following one, that the, the model can actually uh, uh, can collect the authentication details. That is the, 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 the name of the computer, the IP address, and the serial number. Then number two, it was also used to prove that a registered computer can access the network. And alternatively, or the other way around, if the computer is not registered, it cannot access the network. And then number four, the prototype also was used to show that an already locked on or an allowed computer can be denied access to the network if a need arises, as illustrated in the following figures. Let me run through these figures, like the first figure on, on registration of uh, computers. Then this is the interface for, for registering computers. And then you can display them on the registered devices interface. This is just the one that I used, we, we used to, to test on the prototype. Now, uh, on, on, on our area of concern, that is on the setup, on the actual setup, where we add the three, the, the two computers and the server. So here, first of all, we wanted us to demonstrate that information, especially the serial number, and the name can be collected from, from, from 
locked on computers. So first of all, we have to register uh, these two computers. One is the server. The first one, that's the call sort LT, is the server. And then the first row, 1015 PC, is a client, one client and one server. So that uh, uh, when we try, when, when we try and log on using another computer, Chapor LT, that is not registered. And then this is the result. You can see from this illustration that the, 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 the network interface is, is disabled. It, it, the, the computer cannot, the network access are denied. They cannot log on to the network using this access point because this, it is not registered. So that was the first one. And these other two computers were registered, so they were allowed into the network. Then the other part is once now you register that computer that was not registered, that is the port LT, and then run the system again, then it is allowed into the network. Now, and then the other part is once all these computers are allowed, can we control, can we disallow our computer to continue using the network if need arises. For example, an admin, administrator might decide that uh, this, this computer uh, might be doing what's not supposed to be done, and, and therefore I should kick it out of the network. Then, first of all, you, you, uh, you love to click on that computer. For example, at the first row, 1015 PC, you click on that computer, and it will prompt on whether you want to disable it. Uh, that's the, the, the interface. Then when you, you click OK, and then the, the device will success, successfully be disabled, as you can see in this figure 10. And for, from the, the, the connected devices interface, you will realize that the status of that computer is disabled. It cannot access the network that's been kicked out of the network. And this is the, 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 the network interface access status. You can see that the, the computer, the first row 1015 PC cannot connect to the network because that's been disabled. And so apart from this, then this table summarizes the execution reports. For example, what other functions can, can, can the prototype do? We can register new computers. You can also edit a computer as confirmed in the registered device interface. You can also collect a, a computer serial number, IP address, and name, or, or all those authentication details as also displayed on the connected device interface. You can also collect computers identification or authentication details using different access points. And this one can also be displayed on the connected device interface. You can also allow registered computer in the network. And you can also deny an unregistered computer in the network. And you can also disable allowed computer in the network. So that is the summary of all the execution uh, functions that the pro prototype was intended to do, to function. And then the last part of, of uh, our, our design or, or, our, or, or our, uh, area is to evaluate the prototype. And this was done by using three independent, uh, independent evaluators. And we, had, we drew, drew them from, one of them was a wireless land proprietor. Then the other one was a Wi-Fi owner, and the third one was an IT expert, just to evaluate and validate the model to, to show that or to make sure that it does what was intended or the concept that was intended to prove. And we use the same setup in these three different uh, occasions. And the evaluation summary was as follows in table two below, where uh, we, we also, we were looking at the, the four areas that can the system collect a locked on computer's authentication details? 
then the three evaluators were able to demo, uh, demonstrate it and, and, and indicate that it actually did what was supposed to be done or not. And you can see here, all the three of them were able to run it and it was able to collect the details as it was supposed to. And then the second one, can the system allow registered computer access to a network? Yes, from all the three evaluators. Can the system deny an unregistered computer access to a network? Yes, from all the three evaluators. Can the system deny an already locked on computer to a network if need arises? Or can you, can you control a computer in a net once a com computer is locked onto the network? Yes, from the three evaluators. And this actually depicted what we had uh, done earlier on, the process that we had gone through in, 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 in demonstrating and also uh, running that prototype. And so in conclusion, I can, we can say that the test run from the prototype set up indicated that the SNAP prototype can actually collect a locked on computer's authentication details. That is the, 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 the name, the IP address, and the serial number. And it can also allow a registered computer access to a network now based on the serial number. It can also deny an unregistered computer access to a network and that it can deny an already locked on computer to a network if need arises. And therefore, uh, we can conclude that a serial number can be used to authenticate a computer in a wireless LAN. And we recommend that the prototype can be scaled up uh, uh, because we, were, we did it based on a prototype, but it can be scaled up so that it can be used, it can be adopted as an authentication method. And these are some of the references that I used, and that is it. Thank you.